All right, guys, I'm going to give you my review of Star Wars Bounty Hunter. So this game is pretty old school at this point. It came out like 22 years ago. It's like an early PS2 GameCube era title. But it doesn't matter. The game still holds up. I'm happy to say the game still holds up. It's great. It's fun to play. I really enjoyed playing this game. So back when I, I was a kid back when it came out. I was like an er, early teen at, at that point. I didn't really appreciate it back then. I thought it was shallow. Now, but still, I had good memories of the game. And I saw it. And I, 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 and I know the game came out already on PS4 via emulation. But I don't want to play via emulation. I definitely don't want to play on PlayStation. That's for sure. I was waiting for a native port. And I finally saw it come out on PC as a native port with achievements. 120 frames per second. 4K resolution. Sign me up. I'm down to play this this game again so when it came out i pay i pre-ordered it i downloaded it, i started playing on the first day so let me give you guys my review let's start off with the gameplay the gameplay is a third person shooter no this isn't your typical over the over the shoulder third person shooter no 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 this is way before we had that trend this game you see the whole body you see it, i like this i like this style of third person shooter better you pretty much go through. You pretty much go through each level. Each, each level is pretty much a hallway, uh, a uh, expansive hallway with, where the game throws a bunch of enemies at you. Right? Sometimes more, sometimes less. You go through these hallways. You kill the enemies. Maybe you solve a, a small puzzle. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it. That's the gameplay. But the thing is, where the gameplay shines, it can be shallow. It can be shallow because most of the time you, you're using Django's twin blasters to kill enemies. You lock on. You kill the enemy, you move on to the next enemy, right? If you're going to play it like that, it's going to be as shallow as hell, all right? But where it really shines, the game shines is when the game throws a bunch of enemies at you, like a gauntlet of enemies, and using the twin blasters won't cut it. Otherwise, you're going to die. So that's where you got to improvise and you got to learn how to use your rocket blasters, your flamethrower, your grenades, your sniper rifles. That's where the game really shines when it throws you into situations like that. Crap, like I'm in, the, I'm in this jungle level on Malastar. I got a bunch of snipers on the cliff. You won't get through with your twin blasters. You got to use the sniper. You got to use the rockets or where it's sending a bunch of Bandogora enemies at you. You're going to have to use the rocket blaster or the flamethrower to do crowd control. That's what I liked about that's where that's where the game absolutely shines when you when it really challenges you. And not only that, I enjoyed the setting. It, all the levels it throws you through, like Outland Station, Coruscant, Malastar, Uvo 4, I Tatooine. I liked all these levels, the way they were designed. It really just vibed with me. I enjoyed going through these levels. It was the scenery was nice. Yes, the graphics are all I'll get to that. But for me overall, I enjoyed it. But you gotta really you really gotta think about it. You can't just go around just using your twin blasters. Otherwise, you're going to feel bored. But anyways, that's the gameplay. Now, the story. The story is on the backdrop of Star Wars Episode 2. It takes like 20 years before. It tells you pretty much how the clone army came about to be. How did they find the template? It's pretty much Django Fest story. This game shouldn't be called Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Because you don't really bounty hunt anybody. Yes, there is a bounty hunting, bounty hunting element in the game where you scan enemies. But it doesn't really amount to anything. It's very shallow. It doesn't unlock anything other than a few optional stuff. Um, but the story is pretty much... It's, it's, it should be called, like I said, it should be called Star Wars Jango Fett. It shows you how Jango Fett became the template of the clone army. Pretty much Count Dooku set out a bounty for a, for a dark Jedi who's a leader of a cult. And, you, and pretty much anybody who can kill this Jedi is good enough to become the template of the clone army. So it pretty much shows you Jango Fett fighting with Montrose to see who's going to kill this dark Jedi. And it's a fun story. It's a great story. It's better than the garbage canon they have nowadays. And the new and the current canon, they don't even they don't even mention how Jango Fett became the template. That's bullshit. That's garbage, man. This game actually gives you an explanation. Although they call it Legends, I call that bullshit. This is the true canon, guys. It's a great story. It's a fun story. I really enjoyed it. Any hardcore Star Wars fan who knows better will enjoy this story. It makes absolute sense. Is a great story. And it shows you Django's personality. He's a ruthless bounty hunter, but he does have a soft soft side. He's not a maniac like Montrose, but he's pretty damn ruthless. And I really, really enjoyed playing as Django Fett in this game. Okay, let's go to the graphics. The graphics. Okay, these guys, these are PS2 graphics. PS2 early GameCube graphics. They aren't the best graphics. So, But the remaster cleans up a lot of stuff. It cleans up the textures, makes better textures. You're playing it in HD, in 4K. It's like a really, really cleaned up version of the game in high resolution, widescreen. It's once again, guys. Remember, it's a remaster, not a remake. So you got to keep that in mind. If you ask me, I like the art style. I like the graphical style. It's, these aren't the best graphics, but they 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 get the job done. But the CGI scenes, oh, those are really good. The CGI cutscenes, those are amazing even now. So 
they, they get a pass. The graphics are not bad. They'll get the job done. But once again, this isn't your modern AAA game. You guys have to get past that point if you're going to play this game. It's like uh, GTA San Andreas or GTA YC. It's like those type of graphics. Anyways, but the controls the controls are fine, but there's sometimes there's a glitch. Sometimes I'm aiming my blaster and it just passes out with any weapon. So I, I don't know why it does that. It, it's just a minor grievance. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't, what do you call it, break the game for me. I played it fine on my Xbox Series X Elite controller. It worked fantastically, so I don't have a problem with it. So overall... I give this game like an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun game. It was a fun romp. But once again, guys, this is a... Play it once and you're done with it. There's no reason to go back and play it unless you really, really, really enjoy going through those levels. They're gauntlets, gauntlet of enemies they throw at you. But otherwise, for 20 bucks, you're going to get a good 10-hour game out of this. It's a really, really, really entertaining 10-hour game. You can't go wrong, especially nowadays. It's, it's, this game is a lot better than... than majority of the trash games they release these days so i would recommend it if you're a star wars fan it's been such a long time you haven't played in the last 20 years or you've never played the game and you're a star wars fan you want to see how the clone army came about pick it up no question about it and let me know what you guys think in the comments